it all revolved around the Royal Rumble here in St. Petersburg, Clearwater. We find out early on Pat McAfee is on to commentary. So we get a useless three-man commentary booth. He's not useless. Oh, he's very useless. He contributes nothing. He reaches heights that none of us can reach. Anyway. Women's Royal Rumble. <laughs> Women's <laughs> Royal Rumble. Why are we arguing about McAfee? I don't know. You don't have to like him. Uh, Natalia was number one. And Naomi was back. At least her entrance was good. I thought and her hair was stupid. Not a big pop for a night. Well, the crowd was pretty much dead all night, if I'm being honest. They had but moments. They like at the end back. of each thing. But, but to yeah, be fair, I think Ricochet got a bigger pop than she did. I don't even think he got a pop, did he? I think he did. I remember one or two people cheering. Bailey comes out at number three. Uh, Jordan Grace came out at number five. She's the TNA Women's Champion. She actually Looking looked jacked. Like, yeah, she looked impressive. She looked like a Amazon. Asuka came out at seven, and Bailey looked just as confused as I probably did at that time. But the inbreed brothers creature couldn't pick up Naomi. They were saying she's a pit bull and how super strong she was. And I thought Grace looked really good. Uh, it's just unfortunately <laughs> she plays for another team. And uh, Kari Sane, she came out at number 11. So now I'm really confused at this point. Because I'm thinking, are they going to do like a little story where are the Kabuki Warriors going to fuck over Bailey? Is Bailey going to have to eliminate both of them? Is it going to be like a Final Four situation? Yeah, I was a little nervous. I thought there was going to be a point where Bailey was going to need their help and they were just going to watch her get eliminated. Or vice versa, yeah. Well, you know Bailey was going to help them, but... Well, I thought she would have to overcome them or something. I was always under the impression that Bailey was going to win. Nothing in this match that deterred my belief of that. It was just how they were going to get there. So Asuka coming out. Okay, so she has a partner. That makes sense. And then at the end, she's got to choose her partner or the championship. If Asuka fucks her over, and if it was on EO's orders, then she's got a gripe and a bitch against EO. And now she's not focused on Ripley anymore. She's going to go after EO. So then when Kari came out, like, okay, well, that kind of complicates that. But they could still do it. I just don't see how Bailey is going to eliminate the tag team champions. Yeah, if they were going to do that, it would be like she eliminates someone who then el eliminates them. You know that spot that they do sometimes where the person gets dumped out, but oh man, I forgot who did it. There was one rumble, maybe it was Shawn Michaels. He eliminated Diesel, who was trying to eliminate someone else, but he like got them both out. An accidental elimination because she's trying to eliminate someone else. Well, it doesn't matter because Asuka and Kari were eliminated pretty early, so I don't know. Kyrie had quite the moment. That little hang thing? Yeah, she got thrown out and then she somehow, I don't even know how she did it, she just caught onto the, the side apron. And I'm like, where are you going to go from here? <laughs> well, you saw. Yeah. It's Bel Air KOD's Grace on the Ring Apron, and that's her exit song. It was pretty impressive, too. The running clock for each wrestler was a nice little addition, I thought. Where it's like, Bailey's been in for 30 oh, yeah. minutes. And it has the little people under her. I learned that tiny Zelina Vega can beat the shit out of Piper Niven, but a significantly bigger Maxine Dupree, her hits on Niven have absolutely no effect. So couldn't wrap my head around that. And also Dupree severely downgraded her look from Monday. Okay. Uh, Jax came out at 19 and she cleared some dead weight. Unfortunately, she stayed after that. <laughs> she fucked up a slam on Niven and she got booed. And then Seth's husband came out at 21. And then the dumb bitch tries to immediately rock bottom Nia Jax. And of course she can't because Nia Jax is huge and Becky's not. But Alba Fire comes out at 22 and I'm surprised she wasn't immediately eliminated. R-Truth inexplicably comes out with the deer at number 24. And he's immediately eliminated by Jax. She eliminates the deer just as fast. And the deer blames our truth. I thought that they were running out of women's competitors. <laughs> so they had to bring in some of the dudes. Like they're already borrowing were, from TNA. No, they were going for the comedy spot. Yeah. It failed because no one. It's like the crowd didn't know what was going on. Because it was stupid. As you notice, he came out at 24 in the men's rumble. So he got it mixed up. He thought that was his rumble. Okay. <laughs> Even funnier. Pierce comes out there and he said, what are you doing out here? He said, I'm in, I'm entering the rumble. And then Pierce said, this is the women's Royal rumble. And truth looks in the ring. He said, you mean all of them are women. <laughs> <laughs> that was the part I found funny. Okay. Zoe Stark came out at 26. 
at this point, I'm shocked that Vega's still in the match, but Stark and Baszler, they quickly fixed that. And then we get to number 28. Did, is the theme song the same from AEW? It's not, but it was damn close. It starts with the storm is coming. Yeah, it's tweaked a little bit, but... Okay, it seemed like they knew the song, because I didn't. So this guitar riff and this 80 sounding awesome music starts playing and out comes Jade Cargill. I will give her this right off the bat. She looks the fucking part. She hits the ring. She does this weird ass slam to Jax and then eliminates her all by herself. And she has one hell of a fucking debut. Yeah. And if you pay attention, the crowd was pretty much like so-so. And then that music hits. Mm -hmm. The storm is coming. And then if you look in the crowd, everybody stands up on their feet huge pop she felt like a big deal and i said yeah, and just, immediately and i said and it just took 10 seconds and she's already a bigger star than she was in AEW. <laughs> right yeah she felt like a major deal good for wwe they've been telling us that she's a major deal they wanted you to know she was a major deal and she carries herself like a major deal yeah and we got the payoff and there was even a holy shit chant couldn't have been a better debut uh, morgan she's back at number 30 her top was the only thing that I found intriguing. I thought it was see-through, but it, unfortunately it wasn't. You're right. Bel Air and Cargill had their little face off. Bel Air's stupid little faces almost killed it, but luckily it was still pretty cool. Corey said that they're mirror images of each other. I don't think that's the case at all. I don't know if you got it, but they were doing the face to face and then oh, so conveniently you see the WrestleMania sign in the background. Yeah. It's like, okay, we're starting off there, I guess. Maybe. I don't know. Just Jade was just standing there serene and focused, and Belair just had that stupid little fucking twitchy stroke face and her smile, like, no. <laughs> I don't know what that was. That noise. <laughs> <laughs> that's the that's the noise that I picture her making every time she makes that face. Her right eye squinches up and she does that smile. <laughs> All right. So yeah, they have their stare off and yeah, they prevented them from actually getting into a altercation. It was good. We have anticipation for that. And then Bailey eliminates Bel Air and Stratton at the same time. So the final three, not final four is Bailey, Morgan and Cargill. I think you had Morgan. Yeah, I think I did. I don't remember. And you know, funny thing is I just listened back to it too, <laughs> okay. but I got Bailey. Eh, it didn't I mean, that was the big one. That was close. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you got Liv Morgan. I'll give you it. So yeah, we're down to three girls now and they, they get on the apron and they all just start fighting. So it's kind of like last year uh, and Morgan eliminate. It is exactly like last year. They all got on the apron and fought and that's how they got down to the elimination. Morgan eliminates Cargill and then Bailey eliminates Morgan. Thank God. And then Bailey is going to WrestleMania and then Seth's husband who was eliminated a while ago is shown still pouting by the announce desk, which is kind of pathetic. Guys, this was her moment to get to WrestleMania. She missed it. Yeah, she's pathetic. They were all there. I just saw her. They didn't focus Becky, on anybody else. Becky was there. Stratton was there. Bianca was there. And Liv Morgan was there. They showed Becky, and then they had another shot where they showed all the rest of them just, like, looking up at Bailey. So that's probably your Elimination Chamber match right there. Okay. I do have a couple shout-outs. <laughs> <laughs> well, first, Maxine Dupree should probably just be a manager. Yeah. And especially if she's going to do that fucking coward fetal position shit. Oh, that was... <laughs> yeah. Jade Cargill and Tiffany Stratton. Those are your two future stars of the division. That's the shout outs. You have Jade Cargill. She has the presence. Tiffany Stratton. She has the presence. These are going to be big players. I don't get it with Stratton, but definitely Cargill. She has the aura. That's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about aura. But yeah, that was, I expected to skip it, but I ended up watching the whole thing. It's pretty good. It's probably the better of the two. Yeah, I would say it was the better of the two. Because they don't have enough women to fill the 30-person rumble, then they have to, like, get surprises. So that's why you got, like, Jordan Grace and Naomi. I don't know if Naomi was that much of a surprise. No Sasha Banks, though. No AJ Lee. <laughs> Those were surprises. According to the reports now, Sasha is AEW bound as soon as she's done acting. Yeah, they got to move the goalposts again. Yeah, they're just going to keep moving that goalpost back until she shows up. Like, just shut up. <laughs> <laughs> you get one. And if you say <laughs> if you're wrong, then you shut up. 
there you go. Well, up next is Randy Orton versus AJ Styles versus LA Knight versus Roman Reigns for the Undisputed Universal Heavyweight Championship. And it's an ODQ match, so Roman has a super easy way to retain his belt. And this was surprising that this match was, or at least for me, this was surprising that this was the next match. It makes sense that the Royal Rumble is the main event. It doesn't make sense that this is the second match. Yeah, completely weird. surprised me. And I thought it was so Roman can just leave early, but no. They had this match before the U.S. title match. Okay. Yes. So it starts off as it should with all three men beating the piss out of Roman. Styles and Knight, they end up fighting while Roman and Norton fight on the floor. Knight hits Reigns with a BFT. Styles breaks up the pin. Roman uh, eats a Styles clash. Knight breaks up that pin. Orton RKO Styles and Knight. And then Roman uh, goes for a Superman punch and he gets RKO'd. Then Solo, he pulls the ref out of the ring just before he can count to three. So then Orton goes after Solo, but he gets a spike. Then Solo spikes Knight. He stacks Knight on top of Orton. Then he goes on the prowl for Styles. And he goes for his Umaga ass thing to Styles on the barricade, but Styles moves out of the way. I don't think you see Solo for the rest of the night. Yeah, that's pretty much the end. <laughs> it's the last time we see Solo. Uh, Styles does a phenomenal forearm to Roman. And he falls on top of Knight and Orton, and Styles covers all three dudes, and they all kick out, illustrating how ineffective Styles is. And Styles goes under the ring, he gets a chair, and he beats the fuck out of Roman, then he beats the fuck out of Knight. He goes after Orton, but Orton stops him. Then Roman spears Orton, and Orton rolls out of the ring. Then uh, Knight gets the jump on Roman, he goes for his BFT, but he shoved in the Styles, who was going for the phenomenal forearm while they were getting into it. Then Roman, he Superman punches Knight, and then he spears Styles, and he gets the pin and the win. And that was the most anticlimactic Roman match, I think. Yeah, I think it was tough because we knew he was going to win. That was part of it. I mean, I thought like maybe there was going to be a new Bloodline member or something, some surprise, anything. But no, he just won. Well, I think because of where the match fell, like where it was at, I knew there wasn't going to be like anything special. Okay, if anything, they're going to bring out The Rock, but they're not going to do it now because <laughs> then they right. you know, up the Royal Rumble. <laughs> well, no, I thought like they'd bring out Jacob Fatu or something. Well, apparently Booker T is lobbying to try to get him into the WWE. Which they should have done a while ago. Yeah. But yeah, that was a, uh, okay, whatever. Thanks for playing. <laughs> We're not going to see Roman again for six more months. When are you talking about? I'll be back in 70 days. Yeah, there you go. Now 69 days. Nice. Kevin Owens and Logan Paul are next for the U.S. title. Owens lost by disqualification. This is the match I skipped. Well, yeah, it was pretty straightforward. Again, you knew Owens wasn't going to win. There was a very, very close moment. So basically, in the end of the match, some dude jumps the barricade. I didn't know who it was. Even them saying it, I still didn't quite know who that was but he was causing a distraction yeah i don't know if he was a fan or i don't i don't know anyway let's move on from that guy <laughs> <laughs> out comes grayson waller and austin theory through all this distraction theory hands some logan paul brass knuckles well he goes to hit kevin owens kevin owens catches his hand he takes the brass knuckles turns it on logan paul he hits logan paul with the knuckles this moment you think kevin owens is about to win he hooks the leg. He goes for the pin. The ref counts one, two. And then at that moment, he sees that Kevin Owens still has the brass knuckles on his hands. Kevin, this isn't 95 WCW. What are you doing? <laughs> yeah. And he said, what are you doing? You got brass knuckles. Immediately calls for the match. So Logan Paul retains. If I can mark up a little bit. The only thing I didn't like about it is Logan Paul did get hit with brass knuckles. And then he was up pretty fast after that. Pretty much no sold the knuckle spot after the match. If I can borrow a little bit from the retro review, we saw the giant, the giant get hit with a belt. And then he was out for <laughs> minutes. <laughs> <laughs> like that's how you sell something. Yeah. Yeah. Like at least he should have been laying there until we go to commercial. Well, looks like this one's not over. Yeah. Maybe that's Owens WrestleMania match. Or I know a lot of people. Chamber. Yeah. A lot of people say that it's going to be LA Knight versus Logan Paul at WrestleMania. I think that's a downgrade for LA Knight, if I'm being yeah, honest. Yeah, at this point. Yeah. I think he's above that title right now. So 
it makes sense that it would be Kevin Owens, but yeah, they can do it at Elimination Chamber, but we will see them again. And finally, that brings us to the Men's Royal Rumble. And out at number one comes Jey Uso with his little white lay flower thing. With the yeet shirt. Oh, with the yeet shirt. And who is number two? Jimmy Uso is number two with a no yeet shirt, since we're paying attention to that. Yes, yeet versus no yeet. <laughs> <laughs> That was the most important part of the match. I'm surprised I didn't pay attention to that. So yeah, they have the stare down and they, they start getting into it. It was kind of funny because every time Jay would land a blow, yeet. And then every time Jimmy would land a blow, no. Yeah. Yeet. No. Yeet. El Adolio is back. He's at El Idolo. Whatever. He's Charlotte four. Flair's boy toy. Oh, they're actually married, but you get it. Yeah. You can, you can tell what she's into him for. <laughs> well, that's all weird. Never mind. Redact that. <laughs> Lashley comes out at number 11, and he immediately eliminates Karrion Cross, and then Cross ends up eliminating Lashley. So there's that. Prophets and Testament, they brawl to the back. Cody comes out at 15. He crossroads Nakamura out of the ring. Looked like it hurt. Gunta comes out at number 18. And he comes out and he just chops the shit out of everybody. And he easily scoop slam the Bronson Reed. Now Gunther and Cody have a, a stare down and the fans get like really excited about that. Yep. Call back to last year. And Braun Breaker comes out at 20. Almost comes out at 21. And Reed helps almost eliminate himself by jumping over the ropes. I don't know what the fuck he was doing. He needs to stop doing that. <laughs> well, look at him. <laughs> He's got to help people. And every time they do that, he needs to jump over himself. And obviously he's jumping. They need to figure out another way to get him out of the ring. Or don't put him in matches where he needs to go out of the ring. But McAfee's in there at number 22 for some fucking reason. And then the dumb fuck eliminates himself. He's got a worldwide show he's got to run. That's a business decision, as they call it. But then don't get in the match. Don't throw yourself in as a competitor to a match if you're going to be a pussy and not even compete in it. You got Omos. You got Bronson Reed. You got Gunther in there. It was a business decision. He makes too much money to be putting himself in that. Coward. Yellow. He is the stripe on his back is the same shade of yellow as the Hulkamania that runs wild, brother. <laughs> McTurd came out at 23. Breaker uh, spears him, then barks in his face. Our truth, he's 24 and he throws McTurd in so he can get eliminated. And he tries to tag Dominic. I'm so over truth. <laughs> I'm so done with them. I don't know. Did you see the crowd? They were really into this. The, the, the crowd's stupid. Thing. I, I don't pay attention to the crowd because they're dumb. They were also shouting, jump that trick or whatever. Flip that trick. Yeah. The crowd has no indication of what to cheer and what not to cheer. Gunther sold for our truth. That happened. I knew you weren't going to like that. <laughs> I was like, oh, he's probably going crazy right now. <laughs> oh, my God. Luckily, you know, he got it back, but uh, R-Truth actually got Gunther off his feet. Yeah, he hit him with the John Cena shoulder tackle. He's about to hit him with the five-knuckle shuffle. Yeah, that was dumb. Priest comes out at number 26. He immediately hits the ring and just decks our truth and then he tosses his ass out of the ring. So I don't think he's quite over Monday. Yeah, he's still holding that on. Uh, CM Punk 27 and he still has it. Now, if you've been watching AEW, you knew that, but I don't watch that. So I didn't. In fact, the last time I saw Punk in anything competitive was UFC. That's not the best representation of Punk. All right. Gunther, he eliminates Miz with a chop, making him 3-0 against the talk show host. And McIntyre is out at 29. Gunther eliminates Jay. And finally, at number 30 is Sami Zayn. Good call. Zayn's only focus is McIntyre. Uh, Zayn eliminates Priest. McIntyre eliminates Zayn. So our final four is McIntyre, Rhodes, Gunther, and Punk. And they show Roman and Rollins. They're watching from skyboxes. And then uh, Gunther and McIntyre play who can chop the hardest. Then they start bickering. And McIntyre claymores everybody. And he pauses to look at the WrestleMania sign. Then he pauses to tell Punk his ass belongs to him. And then Punk eliminates McIntyre. Then Gunther Punk Power... really getting his ass beat, too. <laughs> yeah, he was. And McIntyre was beating that ass. <laughs> Gunther power bombs Punk. Cody eliminates Gunther again. And then we are left with Punk and Cody. And this is by far the best part of the Rumble. 
Punk did the rolling Benoit German suplexes. He kept trying to hit a crossroads, but Punk would sneak out of it, and then he finally hits him with it. Then he goes to dump Punk out of the ring, and then Punk reverses it into a GTS. Punk hits Cody with a pedigree, and they're all like, oh, there's a lot of meaning in that pedigree, because, of course, it's the 10 years to the day since he walked out of the company. And it was funny, because Punk turned to the announce desk. He's like, yeah, yeah can you believe I did that shit? And then he and says... he gave he, a little yeah, smile before he did it. Yeah. He says he didn't wait 10 years to lose to Dusty's kid. And then Punk loses to Dusty's kid. Cody points to the WrestleMania sign for the second year in a row. And then he points directly at Roman in his skybox. And Roman holds up his belt while he and Rhodes, they somehow talk shit to each other from afar. And then uh, Cole asks no, There's no way Cody <laughs> saw what Roman was saying. Right. right <laughs> but no, they were talking shit. And Cole asks what Indian is, and yeah, it seems like Punk is leaning onto the heel side. Yep, he's going to have to bring out the real Punk. Oh, and by the way, if I can take a little bit of credit here, there was at one point in the show, Michael Cole actually said on commentary, there's some people who believe Cody Rhodes hasn't gone through adversity. <laughs> it's like, oh, that's a nice call out, because <laughs> I don't want to take full credit for it, but I know we were one of the first ones to say that, or I was. I was the leader of that train. This kind of seemed flat. When he came back and won the Royal Rumble after hurting himself, that was special. But this time around, it seems like he he's already written in against Roman at WrestleMania, even like when he lost last year. So it just kind of seems like they're following a formula as opposed to good storytelling. They're just like, this is what everybody wants us to do. Go ahead and do it. I think it fell flat because of a couple of reasons. So number one, there wasn't like really any surprises in the men's rumble zero like when when it was getting to like number 30 well first of all yeah we get to number seven and then ricochet comes out it's like really we're wasting number 27 on ricochet well they wasted 22 on mcafee that's okay that was a lot earlier but then yeah we get to number 30 and was, i don't know maybe i'm expecting the rocks music to hit i was expecting the rock i was expecting right. him to come out and just eliminate everybody Say, I'm the head of the board, bitch. Yeah. Or it was either going to be The Rock or, you know, something. I already knew it was Sami Zayn because I had him pegged the comeback. And since we were on the last one, it's like, well, it's got to mm -hmm. be Sami Zayn then. It didn't even seem like that got a pop. It felt like it was just a deflating, oh, Sami Zayn. Like, you were expecting something bigger. They were more excited for his woes than Sami. Yeah. So I think that and then Punk not winning that deflated people a little bit because i was on the punk bandwagon and then when cody wins it's like we both oh, were you know it's, it's the same old thing we just ran this back from last year yeah but i would have preferred that they cock block cody's story draw it out you got 70 days to get there you can get to roman and cody at wrestlemania in 70 days without him winning the royal rumble yeah give him something more like he has to earn his way into wrestlemania well i guess he did but <laughs> oh, <laughs> i mean yeah. he came out at 15 this time not 30 that's true. But yeah. I don't know. It seemed like this is where we were going, so this is where we went. Yeah, true. I don't know. It, it did fall flat. And I don't know if it's the right person won, but I'm more so just like a personal thing because I wanted mm -hmm. Punk to win. But, you know, you can really change it. Okay, so now Punk can go to the Elimination Chamber and win the Elimination Chamber. He gets to WrestleMania that way. So Which, if Cody lost the Royal Rumble, they probably would have done it that way. Yeah, it was really just a swap. Yeah. And maybe they did it this way because of the Seth Rollins injury thing. It's like, okay, if Cody wins the Rumble, that gives us more time to figure out if Seth's actually going to be able to make WrestleMania. As opposed to if Punk wins, then that now we much, know. Yeah. yeah, you're right. So maybe that had something to do with it. But they pretty we much told us on Monday <laughs> where we were going. We still need to see Punk versus Rhodes. Yeah, we're going to build to that. But if you saw Monday, they released the video game trailer. And the whole damn trailer was about finishing the story. Yeah, everybody has a story. So, yeah. So My story. I got the EST story. The whole game was built around the story. So that's telling you this whole year is built around the story, which means there's no one been feeding the story other than Cody Rhodes. So pretty much telling you that Cody was going to WrestleMania. Yeah. Well, there you go. I would say that obviously the women's Royal Rumble was probably the best match of the night. And then it kind of just went downhill from there. Not even downhill. It peaked at the women's Royal Rumble and then just flatlined.
Yeah, and I think just because of the nature of the Royal Rumble, like, <laughs> you have so many possibilities, and then when they don't happen, now we've, like, set ourselves up for, I don't know, it's like, oh, I'm going to get that new game system at Christmas, and then you get a pair of socks. It's like, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It was pretty entertaining. Not it was. Not really anything I would go back and watch. No. But, yeah, the the road is clear, and we now know where we're going for WrestleMania. Because Cody Rose pretty much told us immediately he's going after Roman Reigns. There's yes. no, I'm going to make my decision on Monday. And Roman Reigns accepted from afar. Yeah. And they were telling you during the Royal Rumble, too. Because when it was down to Punk and Cody Rose, they showed, you know, the two champions. They pretty much told you Punk is going to choose Rollins or <laughs> Cody is going to choose Roman. Yes, there was no surprises there. But there's still more to flesh out here. So it'll be a fun ride, I guess. We're here for it.